Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 31st week of WeeklyPokerHand.com. And today I'm going to be going over a hand from a $10,000 buy-in tournament I played quite a while ago. I have no clue what's going to happen in this hand, so it should be interesting. As you see, I do open to three times the blind with the ace-queen suited, and Action Jeff, who is a pretty aggressive online player, elects a three-bat. And when this happens, I don't think I can ever fold my hand. I think it's definitely too strong to to fold. However, I do think that calling is going to be a good play. Because if I do 4-bet here, say I make it 2,600, and then he re-raises me, I pretty much have turned my hand into a bluff. And whenever you do have a hand as strong as, you know, ace-queen, or even like ace-jack in the spot, maybe ace, even ace-king, really, Whenever you're this incredibly deep stack, notice we're about 300 big blinds deep, you really do not want to force yourself to fold your hand at any point. And some players think that by re-raising there, trying to get information out of their opponent to figure out what their hand is, all they're really doing is turning their hand into a bluff. So right here I think calling is by far the best play. We flop a queen, and that is always a good flop. Um, I like to check. He bets 1,600, and right here, again, I don't think I can ever really fold, because if I fold, obviously, he, he could have all sorts of stuff when he 3-bets me. And if I um, raise here, he's, again, probably going to play pretty straightforward. So this is another one of the spots where I'm almost forcing him to play well if I raise. So that really only leaves one option, and that is call. So I do call. The turn's a 5, which is, of course, not a great turn, but I still think it's going to be an okay turn to continue on. I mean, it's pretty tough for him to have a 5 here. I check, he checks it back, and I think that's going to be pretty standard. River's a 9, I check. If he bets here on the river, I fully plan on calling. I don't think it's really possible to just, like, find a fold here. I think that would be way too tight. Um... Really, the only hands we lose here, too, are just like a random flush draw, which I think he probably would continue betting on the turn, or jack-10, which is certainly a possibility. Um, that being said, I, I, I really do think we beat pretty much all of his hands here besides a king. I check, he checks it back, and uh, sure enough, he does have one of those hands that he would certainly fold and pretty much play, play optimally if I raise him at any point, and by checking throughout this hand... We gave him an opportunity to, to throw out some bluffs and try to steal the pot. So, uh, I think, I, I mean, I like the way we play this hand. I don't really think I should go for value on the river. A lot of players would think on this river, oh, you have the best hand, so you should value bet. What they have to realize is that it's going to be very tough to get paid off here if I value bet. I mean, the guy can only really call with pocket jacks, and even then, do you think a guy's going to call with jacks on, like, king, queen, xxx? I would, I would say probably not. So, this is one of the spots where I just think that we're going to be way better off by simply checking and trying to induce a bluff. So, that's going to be that for this episode. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know. Uh, in part two, I will take a look at the hand from my opponent's point of view, and I will discuss whether or not I think his play is good or bad. This has been Jonathan Little for the Bankroll Builder series. Thanks for watching.